NASA says we are returning to the moon, this time to stay. When Artemis 1 launches, we will have taken the first major step to return a human being to the moon since the 1960s and 70s. If we're staying, we need something more permanent than an orbiting tin can. The answer could be buried underground. Our moon is a very inhospitable place. Unlike Earth, our moon does not have a magnetosphere and an atmosphere to shield us from solar and cosmic rays. These particles can be deadly since they pass right through human skin, where they shed their energy and destroy DNA on their way. Our moon rotates very slowly on its axis, once about every 29 and a half Earth days. This slow rotation means the surface of the moon is in the sun for 15 Earth days and in the dark for another 15 Earth days. Without an atmosphere to act like a blanket, this creates some extreme temperature differences. During the day, temperatures can go as high as 120 degrees Celsius at the equator. At night, the temperature can drop to minus 130 degrees Celsius. If the surface of the moon is so inhospitable, underneath the surface, there is hope. A long time ago, the moon was volcanically active. And where there are volcanoes, there are lava tubes. Lava tubes are empty channels in the ground, formed by lava flowing from volcanic eruptions. To understand lunar lava tubes, we don't have to go very far. Here on Earth, scientists can observe how lava tubes form. When lava reaches the surface through a vent or an eruption, it follows gravity and the path of least resistance, just like water. As it flows, the surface of this river of lava hardens, forming an outer crust as the lava continues to flow underneath. If the lava inside the tube drains out, what's left is an empty cavity. Sometimes the lava does not completely empty, but a small amount remains trapped inside the bottom of the tube. When it hardens, it leaves behind a flat floor, which makes converting lava tubes into habitation much easier. There are many examples of lava tubes on Earth. Some tubes lead to spacious caverns. Repeated volcanic activity over thousands of years can create complex networks of lava tubes with many layers. Because lava tubes are buried deep underground, they can be hard to find. So, how can a spacecraft orbiting the moon find them? There's one telltale sign that a lava tube exists under the surface. Skylights. Skylights are openings created when a section of the roof of a lava tube collapses, revealing the cave underneath and creating an entrance into the tube system. In 2009, Japan's Kaguya spacecraft captured images of what could be a skylight. These pits are hard to find because when seen from an orbiting spacecraft, they look very similar to craters. But unlike craters that have sloping inner walls, these pits have vertical walls and a flat floor. A meteoroid could produce a crater, but a hole like this could only be produced naturally by something collapsing underneath. This suggests the presence of some underground cavity. We've speculated and theorized about lunar lava tubes for some time, but a new study might just be the tipping point that would make lunar lava tubes the number one choice for a permanent home on the moon. In July of 2022, researchers published a paper on the temperature inside these pits. One particular pit found in the Sea of Tranquility has a comfortable temperature of 17 degrees Celsius in areas where the sun does not shine directly. 
If a tube extends from the pit, it too would maintain the same temperature, varying less than one degree throughout an entire lunar day. Although current spacecraft orbiting the moon cannot make direct observations of these potential lava tubes, the researchers can model their thermal characteristics. The top structure is a pit 100 meters deep with a cave extending 800 meters from the pit and lunar regolith. Next is a similar structure but in rock. The bottom models are again similar to the first and second except that their caves are shorter and the colors indicate the temperature of the inner surface which is 290 Kelvin or 17 degrees Celsius. So now we know that lava tubes can maintain temperatures that would rival the most comfortable homes here on Earth. But will lava tubes protect astronauts from galactic cosmic rays and solar radiation? A safety analysis on lunar lava tube radiation suggests that lava tubes at the depth of 6 meters provides protection from galactic cosmic rays. A shelter that provides this level of protection and comfort is well beyond anything that we can practically build artificially. This begs an interesting question. Just how big can lunar lava tubes get? Gravity and an atmosphere play a key role in the size of lava tubes. Here on Earth, our atmosphere pushes down and in on everything with a force of 14.7 pounds per square inch and gravity pulls everything down, including lava. Lava tubes on Earth only grow to 10 to 30 meters in diameter. If that sounds like a lot of space, consider the possibilities on the Moon. The Moon has one-sixth the gravity of Earth and, like we said, has no atmosphere. In a study by Purdue University, they found that if lunar lava tubes existed with a strong arched shape like those on Earth, they would be stable at sizes up to 5,000 meters or several miles wide on the Moon. If this is true, then a city the size of Philadelphia could easily fit inside a lava tube. No wonder lunar lava tubes are generating so much interest. So, what are we doing about it? Let's look at some of the exploration missions being proposed. From hopping robots to BB-8-like spheres, there's no shortage of solutions. This is a big topic for another video, but let's take a quick look at two proposed missions. A hopping rover proposed by the University of Manchester is dropped into the skylight wrapped in an airbag. It uses a unique hopping action to explore the cave with LiDAR and other instruments. A sphere-shaped rover proposed by the University of Würzburg is lowered into the skylight by a crane. As it is lowered, it uses its LiDAR to scan the pit walls to map its shape. Once on the pit floor, it will detach from the cable and roll on the ground to move to different locations. It can enter a scanning mode by extending rods into the ground to hold it steady. Its LiDAR and camera can then freely rotate inside a mobile shell to scan its surroundings. If you'd like to see a full video of these exploration missions, tell us in the comments below. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. When we return to the moon as permanent settlers, there's a good chance we'll be living in caves. This thought is a bit sobering. Despite our technical advances, we find ourselves once again, like our ancestors in the distant past, as cave dwellers, to start all over again. But we can take comfort in the fact that, should we indeed dwell on the moon in caves, we'd have a pretty good chance of surviving and thriving. After all, as a race, we've made it this far. If you like this video, please give us a like and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos come out.